least amidst a tumultuous period for the company, Sega's Saturn console was designed to compete primarily with the Sony PlayStation and Nintendo 64. It would ultimately fail at both of those tasks, despite releasing quite a few excellent games and also Batman Forever. Much like the Wii U, some of the Saturn's failings might come down to just poor marketing. Was this the 65th different add-on for the Genesis? Who cucked up that wild case design? Does that have anything to do with Phil Collins? Sega had been doing a bit too much for a bit too long, and the market was just also a little bit disinterested. The Saturn may not have seen a true Sonic the Hedgehog game, which some feel didn't help the console struggle to make a dent in the wake of Sega's success with the Genesis, but it did get stone-called classics like the Virtua Fighter series, Daytona USA, entries from the Virtua Cop franchise, and a couple of banger Panzer Dragoon entries. As a matter of fact, if you're looking for the best Sega Saturn games released during the beleaguered system's nonetheless impressive lifetime, you'll find numerous titles that hold up beautifully even today, possibly even more so than the PS1. The Sega Saturn was about as successful as Perry Saturn's WWF run, but you could hardly call it a failure either, judging from these games. Before we get into our list, be sure to let us know down below what's your favourite Sega Saturn game of all time. Number 20, Sonic R. That's right. The R stands for the right side of history. Sonic R Hive, arise. While a 3D Sonic the Hedgehog platforming adventure would have been pretty dang nice on the Saturn, it probably wouldn't have stopped Sony's PlayStation from dominating the market. Nevertheless, Saturn fans didn't get the Sonic game they wanted, but they did get a pretty fun alternative in the form of the racing title, Sonic R. The third game in Sonic's racing series, Sonic R was the first to go full 3D, and even if it might seem like a foregone conclusion in the Sonic universe, Sonic R finds a way to make it all unpredictable and pretty fun. It helps Sonic R that there's a bit more going on here than just a racing game, that there's still plenty of that, with players choosing from a variety of characters and competing on clever, well-made courses. At the same time, Sonic R does right by its legendary hedgehog by offering unique exploration opportunities, a banger of a soundtrack, and a very addictive multiplayer. People don't give Sonic R its flowers very often, and while it's certainly not the greatest racer ever, suffering from some aged controls and a bit of a dearth of content, it is certainly pretty unique. Number 19, Resident Evil. Right, be the first YouTuber to never make a Jill Sandwich joke. It's easy, you can do this, you've got it. Is the Sega Saturn version of Capcom's iconic Resident Evil secretly superior to the considerably more popular PS1 version? That's for you to decide, the answer is no though, but Capcom's first descent into one of their most popular franchises does have some very intriguing, exclusive features and elements that any RE completionist will want to check out. There's a battle mode, different alternate outfits, and even a few extra encounters in the Saturn port that makes up for more than just a few creaky doors. The Saturn version of Resident Evil does have some of the worst loading times you're ever going to experience in a 3D game, but that shouldn't stop you from at least checking out Horror Royalty on Sega's penultimate console. Resident Evil for the Sega Saturn remains an immensely playable, challenging dose of early 3D survival horror, even if these days it's about as cheesy as a Jill sandwich made by God damn it! I've had 54 seconds, not bad. Number 18, Shining the Holy Ark. Set 10 full years before the events of Shining Force 3, the riveting action RPG gem Shining the Holy Ark sets players in the rule of a knight named Arthur. <gasps> Could it be? Shining the Holy Ark is an RPG like the rest of this franchise, but opts for a more traditional RPG experience over the strategic elements that dictate most entries in the Shining series. In other words, it's a perfect choice for old school JRPG fans. And by that, I mean people who have dozens of hours of their lives that they could really do without having any more. While Shining the Holy Ark has a deeper story that forces Arthur to confront the true nature of evil, the beginning of the game sets things up with a varied array of challenging missions. The dungeons are a blast to explore, and it's easy to like these characters and the mechanics of Shining the Holy Ark enough to see the adventure through to the end. Can you see through adding this to your basket on eBay now though? I mean, crikey, look at that. Holy Ark, that's a lot of shinies, guys. Number 17, Fighters Mega Mix. While it might sound like a weird Ministry of Sound compilation your dad's new girlfriend is trying to get him into, Fighters Megamix is altogether a different beast that also won't try to become your new mother. Super Smash Bros is easily the most famous mascot brawler on the planet, but is it the first? No. 
providing Saturn fans with a mix of fighters that was indeed pretty dang mega. The appropriately titled Fighters Mega Mix gave us a slew of popular characters from various games all going head-to-head -head in a 3D fighting game. The result was a hilarious, entertaining title that has sadly been almost entirely forgotten about in modern times. Fighters Mega Mix has one of the weirdest rosters of all time, including AM2 logos and actual cars from games like Daytona USA. The developers clearly tried to also create a game that would have some decent meat on the bones, beyond the silliness of Mr. Meat in a showdown with Pai Chan, and the ability to curb stomp genitals. The result is something that controls nicely, offers plenty of gameplay mode depth, and promises some intriguing whacked out unlockables, including the ability to play as a tree. Checkmate Sakurai, you fraud. Number 16, Saturn Bomberman. Most of us are familiar enough with the iconic Bomberman series to get the gist of what Saturn Bomberman is all about. You have the bombs, they go boom, Bomberman goes to jail for the rest of his life, repents and becomes a counsellor, or something like that. Something along those lines. However, if you don't know, the game's boiled down to planting bombs in a clever maze to destroy your friends who are doing the exact same thing. Sadly, Saturn Bomberman lacks a story mode, which would have been fun on Sega's legitimate 32-bit air, but the multiplayer is always the essential component to any Bomberman game. So when it comes to pure entertainment with game mechanics that literally anyone can understand, even the guy at Polygon who played Doom 2016, Saturn Bomberman is one of the best multiplayer games of the era. Up to 10 players can join in the fun with the visuals of the game dynamic and adorably chaotic throughout. Also, some of the explosions kind of sound like big farts, and that's totally fine by us. Number 15, Mega Man 8. Mega Man 8 brought the Blue Bomber to stunning 32-bit platforms, including the Saturn and the PlayStation. The game sticks to the best of what works for this series, with Mega Man trying to stop Dr. Wily's newest and darkest scheme yet, to add an extra L to his name. However, Mega Man 8 doesn't just retread its formula. The game is ambitious in wanting to take full advantage of something like the Sega Saturn, and it never fails in doing so, offering some of the absolute best visuals of the 1990s. Everything about the Mega Man series gets a serious upgrade here. The 2D sprites are exciting and varied, with atmospheric backgrounds, a deeper story that features cutscenes with voice acting, though you may wonder why Mega Man sounds so much like Mega Girl. Rush? Rush! And a steeper degree of challenge. Mega Man 8 proved the 32-bit era could produce brilliant action platformers without needing to boast about polygon counts. Number 14, A Stall. A style came to the early days of the Sega Saturn with the lofty desire to essentially play as an illustrated fantasy story. As a result, the hand-drawn quality of these characters and their world gives us one of the most visually stunning and unique Saturn games ever made, and also just generally one of the most stunning games, no matter the console. A stall is basically a platformer, but it succeeds in a variety of ways in making itself a little more than a simple bit of genre filling, including some pretty clever boss stages. You're a young boy fighting to save your love from a cosmic evil. It doesn't get much simpler than that, and while a stall is a bit of a basic platformer with a standard story, you're still missing out on an immersive atmosphere, a likeable hero, and a truly original art style if you skip this one. Unfortunately, that's what a lot of people did when the stall first came out, and it's now seen as a bit of a cool hit. Stop a stalling and start a play in this one. Number 13, Virtual On Cyber Troopers. Is this maybe the most 1990s name for a video game ever? Virtual On Cyber Troopers was a good example of the software Sega could make for their own console. Originally released to arcades, the Saturn port offers the same instant appeal of commanding a giant robot fighting another giant robot in various arenas. The game is straightforward in this regard, but don't let Virtual On Cyber Troopers fool you into thinking it's just simplistic. Even in the present, the game provides a myriad of challenges while also being anime as balls. Featuring 8 battle droids and 10 arenas, Virtual On Cyber Troopers offers a rich combat experience for those who can adapt to its sometimes complicated controls and breakneck pace that made it one of the more intense games on the market at the time. Virtual On showed a lot of what the Saturn could do and perhaps could have done better with time, but it just wasn't to be. We can but dream, cast. Wink wink, that's next week's video, wink wink. Number 12, Magic Knight, Ray Earth. There's more to Magic Knight Ray Earth than the trivia fact that its 1998 North American release from Working Designs would be the last Saturn title released for that region. 
which is kind of wild considering just how young the Saturn still was at that time. This is a lush, vibrant and most importantly well-made action RPG based on the beloved manga and anime series from Clamp. Magic Knight Raya focuses on three young girls who travel to a mystical land and are tasked with rescuing a princess named Emerald. The RPG elements are pretty minimalist here, but works well within the framework of fighting enemies and solving puzzles in real time. Magic Knight Ray Earth is a bittersweet conclusion to the Saturn's lifespan in North America. The writing and humour are fantastic, the characters are charming, and the game itself is immersive and gorgeous. It deserved better, and also you may need to get a better job to buy a physical copy of it. In the future, our currency won't be Bitcoin, it will be Sega Saturn games, what the hell. Number 11, Guardian Heroes. There aren't too many beat-em-ups quite like Guardian Heroes, combining a visual style and basic gameplay approach that might remind you of Sega's legendary Golden Axe series with some nicely utilised RPG elements, this is one of the most interesting hybrids on a console that seemed eager to focus on new ideas. The first thing that might become apparent with Guardian Heroes is that it still looks and sounds absolutely fantastic. The screen is almost always beautiful chaos and the soundtrack remains an absolute knee slapper. The story mode and multiplayer for Guardian Heroes are each fantastic in their own right. Branching paths add further layers of depth to this underrated gem. Guardian Heroes is pure arcade fun, but the game also utilises creative concepts like levelling up that allow it to go a bit further than what you might be expecting from just about every other beat-em up game out there. We think for the games on this list, Guardian Heroes has a pretty good chance of being a success upon a reboot, so what are you waiting for Sega, you, you cowards? Number 10, Daytona USA. Right from the start, Sega promised a console that would flawlessly port their biggest and most successful arcade releases. Daytona USA, not surprisingly, was at the top of many fans' lists, and it helped itself by having one of the absolute best video game intros ever. <laughs> <sighs> hearing this at arcades or at your mate's house was basically like hearing the horn of Helm Hammerhand. The actual release proved to be a remarkable example of the power that Saturn was going to bring to the table. Naturally, the game shows a little bit of age these days, but the visuals are still striking and colourful. And above all else, Daytona USA is still tons of fun to play, even with a frankly incredible amount of pop-in that plagued most 3D racers of the 90s. Daytona USA exemplifies the fast-paced and constantly exciting arcade games Sega was producing in this period. The company might have been experiencing some serious internal and external issues by 1995, the time of Daytona USA's release, but they were still making the games people wanted to play. Number 9, Die Hard Arcade. Saying that Die Hard Arcade is based on the classic Die Hard film franchise isn't all that accurate, as we can't remember Bruce Willis beating up robots with a steel pipe, but we must admit that like pretty much everyone else on the planet, we haven't seen Die Hard 5 yet. However, Sega needed to do something with a license, so here we are with a bit of nonsense fun bollocks. It doesn't particularly matter that there aren't any movies in which John McClane teams up with a female officer named Chris Thompson to save the president's daughter from terrorists. Someone's gotta start putting trackers on these daughters, by the way. What matters more is that this 3D beat-em-up was intensely fun to play, despite a relatively complicated moveset. Die Hard Arcade, which is actually a reskin of a game called Dynamite Cup, is an exercise in the ridiculous in every possible regard, and this is to the benefit of the game overall. Over the top would perhaps best describe Die Hard Arcade. From the moves you can pull off, to the enemies you face, to the very silly storyline and characters, everything is as daft as it is playable. Number 8, Street Fighter Alpha 2. Street Fighter Alpha 2 is another stellar title in Capcom's Street Fighter Alpha series. Some of the names and faces might be familiar, but the series and the second game which was no different itself found a variety of ways in which to distinguish itself. Street Fighter Alpha 2 features a unique, more vibrant animation style combined with a custom combo system that's easy to understand but difficult to master. It was at the time of its release a formidable evolution of Capcom's flagship fighting franchise. Fans of fighting games will find it pretty dang easy to include Street Fighter Alpha 2 on their list of the best Sega Saturn games. Every character has something to contribute and the game's various modes can keep you occupied for quite some time, even if you're like us and still trying to get people who play as Dal Sims disqualified for having cheese string legs. It's not fair, the hacking, it's a hack. There have been many, 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 many Street Fighter games since this one, 
but Street Fighter Alpha 2 is still absolute gaming royalty. Number 7, Sega Rally Championship. At one moment in time, games like Sega Rally Championship emphasised that there were few that could even approach Sega in the arcade department. That fact still mattered when the Saturn debuted in the mid-90s with such releases as Sega Rally Championship. The company promised a close to arcade perfect port of their hit racing title, which featured fast paced racing against a sea of stunning backdrops. Did they deliver? Well, as you can tell from its placement on this list, yes, with Sega Rally Championship being a strong hit when the console needed to showcase what made it special. It's not flawless, but the graphics, physics and handling all work to make the game one of the best racing titles for home consoles in that period, as well as one of the best Sega Saturn games, period. Rally games aren't all that popular or special these days, but games like Sega Rally Championship used to point towards what the future of gaming could look like, and that's something that's still worth remembering even now. Number 6, Virtua Fighter 2. Hey Sega, remember this series? Remember Virtua Fighter? Ugh. Textured polygons were a big deal when Virtua Fighter 2 lived up to everyone's expectations in 1995. This was a sequel that understood expectations to do much better than its fairly buggy predecessor, met those expectations and showed with extraordinary playability and style how far the medium had travelled since the 1970s. You can see elbows now, and not every polygon looked sharp enough to cut a pizza. It's difficult to undersell just how wild it all felt back in the 90s, and we will probably never feel a leap like it in gaming ever again. Much of what made the first Virtua Fighter a treat to play can be found here, but with vast improvements to every single vital component. It wasn't arcade perfect, which would be virtually impossible beyond actually having the cabinet in your home, but Virtua Fighter 2 proved to be another winner for the Saturn's promise that Sega's hottest arcade hits were going to be well represented. From graphics to controls to gameplay mode, Virtua Fighter 2 made a strong case to pick up a Sega Saturn. Number 5, Burning Rangers. It didn't help the Sega Saturn that the system never received a true Sonic the Hedgehog release. Sonic R doesn't quite count, of course, as seriously as we wish it was an eSport these days. At least part of that can be explained by the fact that the legendary Sonic team was working on stuff like Burning Rangers for the Saturn instead. Released in 1998 at a point in which the Saturn was clearly on its way out and a really bad Godzilla movie was on its way in, the game offered a truly unique experience that featured some of the best voice acting and visuals of the 1990s. Burning Rangers will task you with fighting deadly fires in a utopian society, because fire isn't very chill in Nirvana, believe it or not. Armed with a cybernetic suit, you must prevent deaths, eliminate the blaze, and even defeat the maniacal figures who want to watch the world burn. And no, we don't mean people who ring the bell as the bus is already pulling into the bus station. Why are you like, why do you do that? What, what, what do you gain? Burning Rangers has unique compulsory gameplay, combined with awesome graphics and a kick-ass soundtrack that will have you slapping your knee like a New York Rangers fan watching Wade Redden. American Sports Reference! Number 4, Shining Force 3. Imagine being a Saturn fan outside of Japan, playing and loving the first instalment in Shining Force 3, and knowing the odds of getting the other two instalments are slim to none. Indeed, Western players would only ever get to play the first part of Shining Force 3, Scenario 1, during the lifespan of the Saturn. The context that's like only ever getting the first disc for Final Fantasy 7. The other two chapters remained in Japan, leaving fans of this intensely satisfying 3D tactical RPG title pretty dang frustrated. But Saturn fans in Japan never got Congo the movie, The Lost City of Zinch, so checkmate. Whether you decide to seek out the rest of this game for the Saturn and also learn Japanese, the one localised release is another strong RPG for the Sega Saturn. Shining Force 3 offers deep tactical gameplay, difficult and quite varied missions that are never too hard though, and characters who help to only further the experience of completely surrounding yourself in a new world. You could even get buffs in battles by making mates, which is pretty dang cool. Could you imagine how well received this would be if the other two scenarios were ever released? For now, it remains a bit of a cult classic, with the price tag to match. Oh my jeez. Number 3, Dragon Force. You don't need to get through the fire and flames to appreciate just how good this was on the Saturn. A real-time strategy RPG that was unlike just about anything fans had ever seen from this genre, Dragon Force had several things that helped it stand out way back in 1996. Beyond the fact that it's graphically and sonically still a bloody delight, the game has you choosing a kingdom to control, from eight and all, in the land of Legendara. 
two kingdoms become available after completing the game, which is one of the ways Dragon Force gave fans plenty to enjoy past the first wall of credits. They have a major hook for Dragon Force, and it's still pretty damn impressive to this day, with the ability to have upwards of 200 soldiers fighting on your screen, all under the chaotic umbrella of brutal real-time strategy. Yet, yeah, Dragon Force is one of the hardest strategy RPGs of the era, which also places it pretty high for hardest ever. Yet for those with patience and some measure of bravery, Dragon Force is a masterwork of its genre and one of the very best Saturn games ever made. Number 2. Nights into Dreams For all intents and purposes, Knight, the start of Nights into Dreams, was the true mascot for the Sega Saturn, with Sonic busy doing fun runs with his mates and Alex Kidd facing lawsuits for giving children migraines. Yuji Naka's Nights into Dreams provide the players with a surreal landscape in which to fly, collect orbs, and try for the best possible score across each stage. The game forced players to utilise what they understood about the platforming genre within the construct of some very different rules for gameplay from what they were used to. Even the premise of Nights into Dreams remains fascinating, and quite different from everything else being released then or even now. You're helping two young children confront their real-world problems with the inner strength they can derive from their dreams. This premise combines beautifully with a game that's easy to pick up, but difficult to master. Pretty apt for a masterpiece that, strangely, only ever had one full sequel. Say, I wonder what Eugene Knacker's up to these days, let me just look that up quick. Oh, oh dear. Oh yeah, don't, don't look that up. Oh Christ, I should have left that. Number 1. Panzer Dragoon Saga it's true that the Sega Saturn wasn't able to last the distance technologically as well as the PlayStation, which somehow spluttered along until 2006. However, as games like Panzer Dragoon Saga proved, the Saturn was still more than capable of delivering some of the best new titles of the time. This classic JRPG offered players an experience as deep and engrossing as anything you could find on any other system at the time. Playing as the protagonist Edge, no, not Christian's former best mate or the guy from U2, your simple story soon becomes a complex saga oi -oi, featuring dragoons, empires, and a world truly unlike anything seen before or since this game was released. Panzer Dragoon Saga deserves to be remembered in the same light as other RPGs of the 90s, including Final Fantasy VII, as an incredibly ambitious game for the time, but the Saturn's relatively poor sales means it's a classic that few have actually played. Despite those poor sales, Panzer Dragoon Saga remains the definitive title for a system that is still celebrated by many to this day, and rightly so. The Saturn is a weird console that felt wholly stuck between different gaming eras, but it's an absolute banger of a console all the same. And that was our list for the best Sega Saturn games of all time. It's lucky that I've just finished recording there, as currently seagulls are having what feels like a battle royale outside my window. What was your favourite game of all time on the Sega Saturn? What did we get wrong on this list? What did we overlook? What was too high? What was too low? Be sure to let us know down in the comments down below. But now for some Dragon Force to play us out. Times up by twenty.